The threat includes Mount Rainier, which scientists continually monitor for activity. Beneath the gray skies and ancient forests of the American Pacific Northwest, the ground has begun to stir. Mount Hood and Mount Rainier, names that echo like legends across the evergreen valleys, are sending out subtle but unmistakable signals. Earthquakes, small but numerous, have rippled beneath their slopes in just the past week. The forested ridges and rugged glaciers stand silent above, but sensitive seismometers buried deep in the earth tell another story. For generations, these volcanoes have slumbered as powerful symbols, their permanence rivaled only by the ancient cedars that surround them. Yet now, the mountains murmur beneath their snow-crowned peaks, magma pulses, and tectonic energy shifts. Scientists monitor, officials issue statements, communities watch with a quiet mixture of awe and unease. It is the kind of tension that only nature can create, a mix of slow-building drama and sudden possibility. The Earth's interior, once imagined as a realm of distant domains, is now revealed through patient scientific scrutiny to be more dynamic and potentially more interconnected than we realized. By the end of 2024, researchers warned that eruption at one or more Pacific Northwest volcanoes was plausible in the near future. That warning grew against a backdrop of mounting anxieties, a world marked by shifting climates, rising seas, and the constant possibility of disruption. In 2025, as these trembling mountains reveal their unrest through swarms of earthquakes and subtle tremors, new questions emerge. Could the giants be awakening once more? Are we standing before the prologue or already within the first act of the Pacific Northwest's next volcanic story? What happens if the giants wake up? And if they do, will we be ready? Under watch, the science of seismicity. Recent breakthroughs in earthquake and volcanic monitoring are revealing a new, more complex portrait of the Earth's hidden processes. In fault zones like California's San Andreas and volcanic regions such as the Cascades, scientists now track not only seismic waves, but also subtle chemical, thermal, and hydrological signals that hint at deeper unrest. These advances are redefining how we assess risk not through dramatic signs, but through the quiet, continuous shifts that suggest the Earth is preparing for change. This shift in focus is especially relevant given recent developments beneath Mount Hood and Mount Rainier. Seismologists from the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, PNSN, reported a burst of activity south of Rainier last week. 47 microquakes clustered within 10 kilometers of a magnitude 4.5 event. Shortly after, Mount Hood experienced its own seismic swarm, brief but tightly packed. These types of swarms are not rare for Hood, but the intensity and pattern have drawn closer scrutiny. Further south, even Mount St. Helens stirred, faintly echoing its infamous past. The Cascade Volcanic Arc, from Northern California to British Columbia, now appears to be subtly conversing with tremors and pressure changes bouncing between peaks. But what do these swarms truly signal? Volcanic earthquakes can result from many forces, cooling rock, tectonic tension, or magma movement. The challenge is determining which is which. In this case, satellite data and underground sensors suggest the presence of magma beneath both Mount Hood and Rainier. While not an immediate cause for alarm, official reports confirm that unrest is above background levels. Translation, the systems are active and a shift, potentially even an eruption, cannot be ruled out. Monitoring tools today are more sophisticated than ever. GPS deformation sensors track minute surface shifts. Gas detectors measure volcanic emissions. Satellites detect thermal changes invisible to the naked eye. Together, these instruments help distinguish between harmless rumblings and events that warrant concern. Yet even with modern data, the true nature of volcanoes 
remains elusive. Their ancient, intricate plumbing systems defy straightforward analysis. A swarm of quakes might mean nothing, or it might mark the beginning of an eruptive cycle. This uncertainty is the heart of volcanic science, interpreting incomplete messages from systems millions of years in the making. Meanwhile, beneath all of this is a broader theme, our expanding but still limited ability to predict natural hazards. As 2024 and 2025 have shown, the most critical warnings may not come from one large quake or dramatic surface shift, but from hundreds of smaller, quieter signal. A new pattern of groundwater movement, a subtle chemical shift, a low magnitude quake in an unusual location. For emergency managers, engineers, and communities, the implication is clear. Resilience cannot rely on outdated maps or single signal systems. A new approach is needed, one that integrates diverse monitoring tools into a unified early warning framework capable of interpreting a wider range of indicators. In the end, the boundary between what we know and what we only suspect is always moving. Safety will depend on how quickly and accurately we can interpret the Earth's language, whether it shouts, whispers, or simply stirs beneath our feet. Hidden Pathways exploring magma's movements. As the ground shook and instruments whirred, scientists refocused attention on an older hypothesis, one supported by both traditional geology and emerging satellite data. The region beneath the Cascades, long visualized as a chain of isolated volcanoes, might actually be threaded with zones of partially molten rock, corridors shaped by tectonic tension, glaciation, and volcanic upwelling over millennia. In some studies, these magma pathways link regions, suggesting that the real risk is not discrete, but networked. These are not open tunnels, but zones of increased heat and partial melt, a complex, ever-changing labyrinth rather than simple passageways. While imagery and seismic analysis map hints of these features, their precise nature remains the subject of research and debate. Still, their possible existence adds a layer of complexity to hazard assessment. A disturbance at one volcano might, in rare cases, influence conditions at another, raising questions about cascading risks. In official reports, the possibility of interconnected magma systems warrants caution, but not panic. Interpretation is careful. These molten corridors are not highways for magma to surge unimpeded between peaks but evidence that the earth beneath the Cascade volcanoes is an integrated zone under persistent stress. As warnings circulate, agencies review hazard plans and communities double-check protocols. Researchers scrutinize tremor patterns for clues, always aware that volcanoes rarely play by human expectations. At the end of 2024, the collective warning was not that eruption is inevitable, but that heightened vigilance is justified. Swarms and shifting magma offer reminders that these systems are alive, however quietly. The Echoes of Catastrophe, Lessons from St. Helens. The Pacific Northwest is indelibly marked by the memory of volcanoes past. Mount St. Helens, whose 1980 eruption in the weeks before May 18, 1980, swarms of small earthquakes, gas venting, and bulging of the mountain signaled trouble. Few, however, foresaw the devastating lateral blast that would follow the collapse of the north flank. Since then, volcanic science has sharpened its tools. Seismic networks, satellites, now track minute-by-minute -minute changes across the Cascade Arc. The aftermath of St. Helens drives every modern response. After each swarm, scientists revisit the 1980 playbook. Are the signs familiar? Do today's signals map onto those that preceded the last major eruption? Mount Rainier and Mount Hood, while different from St. Helens in geologic character and eruption styles, share one grim trait. Both can generate massive lahars. Lahars, fast-moving torrents of water, mud, and volcanic debris, pose the greatest risk to downstream communities and infrastructure. On Rainier especially, immense glaciers overlay valleys where a sudden eruption or earthquake could send debris racing toward populated areas, sometimes with little warning. The current pattern of seismicity at Rainier and Hood has drawn parallels to the prelude 
at St. Helens, but volcanologists caution that each volcano is unique. What looks like a foreshadowing in one case may be ordinary restlessness in another. Volcanic forecasting, for all its advances, remains an art as much as a science. Is today's anxiety merely the echo of 1980s disaster or just the background hum of the Cascade Range? A danger present for centuries, rarely erupting, but never entirely still? Risk and readiness, the human frontier. For communities in the shadow of the Cascades, living with volcanoes is a constant negotiation between vigilance and routine. The valleys ringing Mount Rainier and Hood hold homes, born from glacial melt, serve millions through the basins of Puget Sound and the Willamette Valley. The greatest danger is not always bright eruption, but the immediacy and scale of hazards like lahars, landslides, ashfall. The U.S. Geological Survey and state agencies have spent decades refining lahar warning systems along Rainier's valleys, installing sirens, running evacuation drills, and fine-tuning escape routes. In 2025, these plans are being reviewed again, prompted not by an imminent lahar, but by the possibility of rapid change should unrest escalate. Recent seismic swarms have sparked renewed questions. Are all evacuation routes and warning systems functional? Is the monitoring network robust enough to detect subtle shifts? Do downstream communities truly understand their risk, not from lava, but from debris flows that can outpace a river and arrive with little warning? Climate change adds new dimensions to the threat. Glaciers on Rainier and Hood are thinning. Water tables are shifting. Seasons are less predictable. If an eruption does occur, altered snowmelt and water flow could increase the reach of lahar or even interact with magma to produce minor, steam-driven explosions. Hazards that add complexity, if not always scale, to risk management. Officials now stress that eruption is not always the central danger. The leading concerns in the current watch are layered, earthquake-triggered landslides hydrothermal blasts, and lahars set off by heavy rain or earthquake, even apart from volcanic activity. The threat matrix is complex and evolving, underscoring the need for public awareness and readiness. Ultimately, preparedness is about mindset, not just geology. Will communities heed the warning embedded in each new official watch, or will the effort, like so many before, fade in the next lull? Trigger points controversy, and mechanisms of unrest. Every surge in earthquakes, every change in volcanic gas or surface heat prompts the eternal question, what triggers unrest? Volcanoes are complex, shaped by the slow dance of tectonic plates, the steady fill and pressure of magma chamber, the fragile fractures that thread the crust. Much of the current seismic activity is interpreted as the product of internal dynamics, slow recharge, movement of magma, shifting faults, elevated earthquake swarms, subtle ground deformation, and increased gas emissions taken together may point to renewed magmatic movement, but not necessarily to eruption. Yet, as science and society become more interconnected, curiosity grows about broader influences. Solar flares, those immense eruptions of plasma from the sun's surface, generate magnetic storms that ripple through our atmosphere. Some speculate these space weather events might, in rare cases, exert minor influences on tectonic or volcanic activity. The mainstream geophysical consensus, however, remains cautious. Solar energy, enormous as they are, pale in comparison to the internal forces shaping Earth's crust. While intriguing, a direct link between solar flares and geologic unrest is not substantiated by current data. Still, in moments of uncertainty, such ideas find voice, even among researchers urging humility before the vast mysteries of the planet. For now, though, the evidence points inward. The drivers of the Pacific Northwest's current volcanic unrest reside deep beneath the surface. Shifting paradigms, monitoring in an age of uncertainty. If the Pacific Northwest's volcanoes are becoming more dynamic or simply more closely observed, the tools for understanding them are evolving too. Monitoring now extends from space to the deepest ridgetop instruments. The Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, USGS, and partner organizations track every tremor, 
mapping underground motions that would otherwise go unnoticed. Each record, each tiny earthquake, slow uplift, or trace gas release is analyzed and compared to historic patterns, improving models for what normal and unusual look like at each volcano. The discovery and debate regarding possible subsurface magma pathways complicate hazard assessment. If magma beneath Hood or Rainier were to change pressure, could that trigger further unrest at its neighbors? While scientific consensus is cautious, researchers increasingly explore regional scenarios in which swarms at one peak might foreshadow or interact with activity at another, even if the risk of such chain reaction is still considered low. As communities grow more engaged, monitoring and warning systems expand. Red alert, where it is declared, is driven by predefined criteria, typically a significant escalation in volcanic unrest with an increased likelihood of eruption. In current practice, the Pacific Northwest is not under a red alert. Official advisories recognize unrest remains elevated above background with a possibility of eruption, not a certainty. Public outreach, drills, and social media play growing roles. Yet, as alerts become more visible, the risk of alarm fatigue increases. The challenge is now not only technical, how to monitor, but also social, when to warn, and how to maintain credibility. Imagining what comes next. Pate the future is always to enter a realm of uncertainty. Still, the purpose of volcanic science is not just to observe, but to help guide readiness. Planners rehearse scenarios informed by swarms at Hood and Rainier and possible magma corridors beneath the range. What would happen if new earthquakes grew in strength or frequency, if increased volcanic gas vented from the flanks, if melting glaciers sent lahar warnings rattling downstream, sirens, emergency stockpiles, all are tested anew. Public information is updated. Families are reminded to review evacuation plans. At the same time, science faces the burden of communication. How to warn without overwarning. How to maintain public attention through cycles of unrest and calm. How to acknowledge heightened risk without fueling panic. Through it all, the region's volcanoes persist in their restless silence. Swarms may quiet only to return, and every lull demands as much vigilance as every surge. Will 2025 pass calmly into history, its story written in drills and plans, not eruptions? Or are we, as a society, engaged in a slow motion rehearsal for a geologic event none can precisely predict? The Final Whisper, Stories Beneath the Snow Not long ago, most Americans could name just one danger volcano, Yellowstone, with all its myth and mystery. But today, awareness focuses on the Pacific Northwest, not for present eruptions, but for the subtle, ongoing drama of knowledge deepening and risks reshaping. Beneath Mount Rainier and Hood, beneath ancient forests and winding rivers, stories unfold in silence. Magma pulses, faults shift, and rock fractures, sometimes healing, sometimes growing. The scientific tools of 2025 render these silent workings visible, transforming tremors into warnings and patterns into insight. This age, marked by changing climates and restless ground, demands a new relationship with place. The Cascades are no longer distant scenery, but real, dynamic presences, living forces that require planning, respect, and humility. As the sun sets over the mountain range, peaks white even in summer, the questions linger is this a lull before new volcanic drama, or simply the pulse of a living land, one whose perils and lessons are ever with us? In the end, the earth writes its story in stone and fire, water and snow, and we, dwellers and watchers, face it with readiness, curiosity, and a hope that vigilance and understanding may turn warning into wisdom. If you want to follow every tremor as the story continues, stay curious, stay informed and ask your own questions. The next whisper from the depths may be just another verse in a much longer tale, one that we are only beginning to comprehend.